Good afternoon, good morning, everyone, and where you are, uh, and welcome to this session. Focus on the presentation uh, of the South South report on harnessing digital digitalization for African industrialization. This report was uh, prepared in collaboration with the uh, United Nations Economic Commission and South South Cooperation. And uh, why we have uh, this report, why we prepare together this report, for several reasons. First, digitalization offer a new frontier for Africa industrialization. It has the potential to boost all service efficiently and also to provide a new form to create value chain in the continent. We have uh, seen a lot of uh, progress uh, on digitalization development of startup, tech, tech up, uh, also the development of a new technology in the continent. I can give you some example. For example, between 20, 2020 and 2021, the number of fintech startup has tripled to 5,200 startup in 2022. Also, According to the several uh, study, such as a study produced by uh, Google, Africa internet economy has the potential to reach 5.2% of the GDP in 2025, estimated on $180 billion. And this projection also, by 2050, it will be represent 8.5% of the continent GDP. This uh, will reach around $712 billion. In this context, we need as a UN uh, key player in the continent to provide guidance or to, act to have a diagnostic on the continent where we are and how we can take opportunity of this uh, novel technology to digitalize the continent to get profit of uh, this uh, excellent uh, new contribution to the GDP. And why uh, we collaboratively, United Nations Economic Commission for Africa and United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation for conducted this uh, study. I will give the floor to my colleague Annie from United Nations Office for South South Cooperation to present the report before we open the panel to discuss with our distinguished panelists. Today, we have five uh, distinguished, distinguished panelists, two online and three in person. Online, we have uh, Mr. Marvala, the rector of United Nations University. He will be joining us by on, will be online. I think Mr. Dr. Marvala is online. Also, another distinguished panelist online will be Tefsi Gola from Strategy Arden Civil Society. In person, I have on my left my brother and friend, <laughs> long time ago, since, since Rwanda. <laughs> and uh, he will uh, be one of the key moderator, key, key panelists, as you see, Yamanaka, Senior Advisor of Digital Transformation in uh, JICA. I, you are based now in Japan. <laughs> I think yeah, till <laughs> you come back home. <laughs> on my left, Honorable Susan Dossi, member of the Parliament of Malawi, and last but not least, Dr. Nir Keshri, University of North Carolina in, in Japan. And another brother. Another brother. <laughs> <laughs> And another sister also. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. It will be very, very nice panel because I'm going to moderate uh, uh, my brother, my sister. Eh? <laughs> and I will not ask you <laughs> question. Just we are going to discuss. 
Now to start, let's uh, have the video of Annie because I, it's too late uh, where where it is now, and uh, for 15 minutes to have a presentation of the report before we go through to the discussion. Thank you. Dear distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. I'm Dr. Haney Besada, Senior Research and Program Advisor with the UN Office for South-South Cooperation in New York City. It's my sincere pleasure to be speaking to you today on the topic of a forthcoming joint UN Office for South-South Cooperation, UN Economic Commission for Africa initiative and report on the subject of South-South Cooperation for Harnessing Digitalization for Africa's Industrialization. I'm sorry I cannot be with you in person, but I've prepared a short presentation on the subject to help guide today's session and deliberations. Revisiting industrialization in Africa and the potential role for digitalization and South-South cooperation. Africa's structured transformation has long been advocated with adv industrialization as the key strategy to increase productivity, improve the economic efficiency across different sectors, revenue generation, private sector development sector, employment creation, and the value chain development. Digitalization has the potential to change the narrative of weak industrial development based on manufacturing, soft and hard, infrastructure deficits, human capital skills constraints, and a poor business enabling environment that can be addressed. This digitalization in Africa has the challenges of poor implementation of industrial policies, lack of investments in technological upgrades, inadequate willingness to engage in industrial policy experimentation, and lack of feedback systems used in many African countries. Nonetheless, recent decades have seen significant improvements in aspects of governance industrial policy across African countries, such as in Ethiopia and Ghana. South-South Cooperation offers technical support through knowledge exchange, as well as coordination of policies development strategies. In addition, the cooperative agreements provide opportunities for technological advancements, such as the Belt and Road Initiative or the Information Silk Road driven by China's tech giants, Huawei and ZTE. Determinants of a fourth industrial revolution in Africa. Through the adoption of technology, a fourth industrial revolution is possible in Africa, despite significant development challenges. With new digital technologies, there'll be opportunities for African countries to build new industries, deliver better health and education, other government services, improve markets, and in general, enhance people's lives. What determines the success or failure of digital technology is not only the technology itself, but rather how prepared countries are for technological change and how they use this technology. Thus, governments should make investments in basic digital infrastructure and soft investments in people, including exploiting South-South cooperation opportunities, developing integrated digital strategies within African countries. Other inv investments include physical infrastructures like electricity and internet access, foundational digital systems like digital ID and finance. Making policies, laws, and regulations for digital inclusion for all which covers improving affordability of services adopting services for the marginalized and overcoming gender norms, setting up partnerships involving all relevant government stakeholders and collaborations with other governments in the global south. Other determinants include technological interpolability, technical uh, connection between information and communication technology applications, political interpolability that is in line with line ministries talking to and working together with other line ministries, both domestically and in other developing countries and governments engaging with other relevant stakeholders, including the private sector and civil society, to ensure that the maximum benefits can be delivered across the whole of the economy and society. Looking at the state of digitalization in Africa and Africa's own digital innovations, as of 2018, Africa was the world's second largest mobile phone market. Internet penetration across the continent has increased tenfold since early 2000s, com compared to a threefold increase in the rest of the world, according to the IMF. Mobile money transactions as a share of GDP are roughly 25% compared to just 5% in the rest of the world. E-commerce sales have in the last five years grown from $160 million to $570 million, while the export of professional and IT services delivered electronically rose from $16.7 million to $21.1 million in 2018, according to the OECD. COVID-19 has heightened the need for digital work products and services, as these are increasingly become the mainstay for businesses 
educational industries and families. In terms of Africa's own digital innovation, there's a proliferation of ICT de development clusters, such as the IHUP and NILAB in Kenya, Hive CoLab and AppLab in Uganda, Active Spaces in Cameroon, Banta Labs in Senegal, or InfoDev M Labs in South Africa. It's a proof of the new environment of collaboration, training, application, content development, and pre incubation of firms taking place. Currently, the, the continent boasts an estimated 643 active tech labs. South South Corporation has an important impact on African digitalization through partnerships with the BRICS countries and other, other emerging groups. Groups such as IPSA and FOCAG are also very immensely important in this respect. To South South Corporation, China's telecommunication giants, Huawei and ZTE, has prominent presence in African digitalization through the principles of win-win. Digitalization from development point of view requires an appropriate policy and institutional framework and the expectation to contribute to the human capital development. In the context of African-China relations, digitalization does not address, however, Africa's continuing and deepening structural dependency in the informationalized global economy. Thus, African governments must address market structures failures as part of a new policy and institutional agenda and invest in human capital endeavors to maximize digitalization opportunities. Let's look deeper in terms of digitalization for industrialization from a sector specific. On looking at agro-processing and commodity-based value chain, agriculture in the continent is primarily subsistence driven, employs an inaccurate use of modern technologies, and is poorly integrated with other sectors such as manufacturing and markets. The continent is also battling climate change impacts, resulting in agricultural losses amounting to two to 7% of GDP. Other challenges include unpredictable weather conditions and climate change risks, increased loss of soil fertility. Agro-industry in Africa is plagued by numerous challenges, most of which are country-specific or sector-specific and product category, including lack of access to infrastructure roads, railroad, lack of access to finance, lack of enabling environments, or access to regional markets due to low intra-Africa trade. Agro-industrialization is a formidable strategy where the current structure of the smallholder agriculture shifts towards fewer and larger farms through mechanization. Thus, data for agriculture comes in, comes very important. Data for agriculture moves away from promoting information and communication technologies to enabling the power of data and associated businesses to transform agriculture. The opportunities for harnessing digitalization and South-South cooperation for agro-industrialization in Africa remains immense. Industry 4.0 is considered as an opportunity to improve productivity, including farm productivity, through automation and optimization. In the transport and logistics sector, so among the key sectors on the continent that have relatively large amounts of data and high propensity for digitalization, much of the continent's railway networks are outdated and, and poorly maintained due to historical legacies. The 64 seaports are poorly equipped and unequivocally operating, plagued by long processing time and poor shipping handling measures. The African continental free trade area creates a single market and has the potential for unlocking and strengthening logistics and transport sector. Digitalization on the logistics sector has made significant impact, like enhancing the efficiency of customs and border management clearances, creation of electronic single window systems like in Rwanda, in Ghana, and Senegal, implementation of a one-stop border post in East African community to facilitate intra-Africa and regional trade, creation of Uber app where over 10,000 drivers are using the app with the attraction of international funding, as well as funding from the continent, including $10 million from commercial banks in Nigeria. In terms of policy, the Sub-Saharan African Transport Policy Program has created networks of specialists in transport sector fields and brought together decision makers and stakeholders to develop transport policy. This policy addresses the issue of customs regulations and laws, administrative procedures for facilitating the clearances of goods, as well as the creation of trade finance mechanisms. Despite the challenges faced in industrialization processes in Africa, the continent has achieved a lot, especially through leveraging South-South cooperation through policy frameworks and strengthening governance. 
Let's look at country specifics here in terms of digitalization or industrialization. Taking, ex uh, taking the example of Ethiopia, the second most populous country on the continent. The country has initiated the Asian model of economic transformation by building industrial parks, which are believed to be conduits of transforming the industrialization agenda. The country has made significant progress in the last few years on internet connectivity, mobile coverage, 95% across where population is living, living with broadband subscription. AI developments in, in Ethiopia have taken a different route as compared to other African countries. AI in, in the country started by small startup companies working privately, which resulted in various AI focused startups in Ethiopia. The most prominent include ICOG, Lab, Ethio, Cloud, IS, Ethio Robot, Blue Moon, and Gebaya. South South cooperation in the digital sector has improved Ethiopia's improvement in terms of broadband technologies over the last 10 years, with the participation and investment of donor countries and donor partners, including Chinese multinational corporations such as Huawei and ZTE, by investing more than $1.6 billion in the country's infrastructure. Ethiopian policymakers in the business environment should carefully consider whether the environment is ready to be shaped by unfolding technological innovation Consider if the digital infrastructures are in place. This includes the development and readiness of both the human capital, skilled manpower, physical infrastructure, and understanding the consequences, such as unemployment challenges and opportunities that arise with disruptive technologies, such as AI. Brazil has developed itself as a key global power in agriculture technology, AgTech, with 125 agri companies in 2019. Alice calculates farmers' needs and improves real-time recommendations regarding seeds, fertilizers, and other actions to be taken to maximize productivity. Solif Tech was being used on more than 6.5 million hectares to monitor equipment. While Mexico's new fintech law on regulatory and supervisory requirements are applied to banks and other financial institutions. Those are some of the other examples that the continent could look at in terms of recommendations on how to improve digitalization on the continent. Despite successes, the global South economies face challenges in the industrialization in the area of gender gap, where the majority of women do not have access to internet, low quality infrastructure, why would that make it difficult to deploy digital solutions? A large proportion of the population in the global South live in rural areas, which makes it more difficult and costly to build infrastructures, particularly 5G networks, lack of AI talent, such as machine learning engineers, lack of manpower needed in designing software services and other complex systems required for industrialization. There's a need for adequate policy policies for digitalization and industrialization initiatives. African economies can take a lesson from successful economies, especially in developing local digital solutions that could develop stimulate industrialization by increasing research and development spending. Digitalizations call for comprehensive policy frameworks at both the national and regional levels to address the complex issues that accompany digital transformation. Digital technology are being increasingly used to address health, social, humanitarian, and economic, as, as well as environmental problems facing, pro facing the continent and other southern economies. Among the most important lessons that African countries cannot completely rely on northern technologies and must develop their own digital solutions collectively. This is because most of the technologies imported from other northern economies tend to have a low degree of usefulness and high cost, of in, high cost in the African context, thus intensifying research and development activities and developing local digital manpower is key, as well as promoting South-South cooperation, which holds immense opportunities for African states in terms of sharing appropriate technologies, and human capital. Thank you very much for listening and wish you all a fruitful deliberation. Thank you, uh, Annie, for this uh, comprehensive presentation uh, of the report. Following his presentation, he focused on a key area on uh, like the importance and the limitation of industrialization uh, in the continent. We have a uh, full potential, but we need to overcome
to the insufficient capacity and uh, resources will play a significant role uh, to improve, uh, to develop, to, to increase the industrialization in the continent. I highlight also the role of uh, digitalization as digitalization uh, of uh, a new frontier for Africa, Africa industrialization. He show a lot of statistics on the e-commerce sector, also on the industry sector. And also he highlight the financing and infrastructure because without the financing and adequate infra infrastructure, industrialization in Africa will be not possible or will be limited. And following that, uh, I think we can say this report, it is a rob robust resource for policymaker, industry leader, and as a stakeholder, interest in the nexus between digitalization and industrialization in South-South cooperation. I think it is something we can uh, have our dis distinguished panelists uh, to discuss uh, today, to give their idea and the way forward for Africa to be ready in this for industrial re revolution. I'm going to start uh, to ask one question to my brother and friend, Dr. Nir. Yeah. How do you assess the historical approach to industrialization in Africa, especially in the context of import, substitution, industrialization, and structural adjustment program? What were their most significant shortcomings? Over, over the, to you. You have a three minute. Thank you. Uh, thank <laughs> you very much. Because you are my brother. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for giving me three minutes. Okay, so uh, I think uh, you you were talking about some of the shortcomings. Probably, yeah, th they've written a lot about this import substitution and export promotion. I don't have to talk about that. Uh, uh, some of the key shortcomings I found was that probably uh, in that process, the government became one of the main players, and the developments were m more kind of state-centric, and the role of private sector was minimum. Actually, government uh, governments tried to nationalize the things, and that is probably one of the one of the kind of biggest shortcomings. And second one probably is that. Although Africa has a lot of talent in all areas and have a lot of resources, but the investors, especially the outside investors, viewed Africa as a continent which has only kind of, uh, which is good only in agriculture and mining and those type, those types of primary things. And so the development more fo focused more on the you know the traditional sector and ignore a lot of these modern things like I think the uh, the presenter Hani was talking about AI and ICT and all those things. Those were pretty much ignored. And so that is those are the two main shortcomings I think. And uh, we'll come back to that later. I'll just end here for me. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Uh, I think it's very clear. Now let me government has a role to play. And when you talk about role of government, parliamentary also have an important role to, to play now in this digitalization of the continent. Honorable, you are a member of the African Parliament Network for Internet Governance and, as, and also member of Parliament of Malawi. Can you elaborate, the, considering the context of Africa historical and modern day challenge, including economic dependence, civil, civil conflict. How does government plan to foster a stable environment conducive for industrialization? And uh, could you highlight the case of uh, Malawi? I think Malawi is uh, starting uh, an interesting program on industrialization through digi digitalization. Could you highlight a uh, little bit the case of Malawi as a use case we can uh, maybe m replicate it or listen learn in as African country? Over to you, Honorable. I give you four minutes because you are my sister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, moderator. Uh, maybe I will start by saying as uh, 
um, Africa, we acknowledge that uh, the challenges that civil conflicts may bring about, especially on issues of uh, prices, food insecurity, and other. Uh, for uh, like for Malawi government, it is taking several uh, steps to create a conducive environment for indus industrialization. Malawi is working on reducing their reliance on foreign financial aid uh, by diversifying uh, the economy and attracting more domestic and uh, foreign investments. Efforts are being made to address civil conflicts through peace building initiatives and uh, promoting stability in the region. Maybe just to give an example whereby for Malawi, we value peace and unity. And uh, we had to pass this uh, act, the um, plus relevant uh, uh, dialogue uh, policy on unity and peace. Um, as Malawi government, we came up with uh, uh, a vision in its uh, national plan, 2063 pillar number two, where industrialization is the center of uh, that uh, um, national plan. Uh, we are also in the process of uh, consolidating the special economic zones and uh, industrial parks. Uh, we think that this is like uh, a mechanism for attracting foreign direct investment and also accelerating industrialization and creating jobs for economic uh, transformation. Uh, the special economic zones and industrial parks will spur technology and development. Um, in Malawi also, we encourage uh, cooperatives uh, to produce and pro process and sell with uh, participation in, viab in viable uh, <coughs> value chains. Just to also mention that uh, we, ha we also have some uh, one border posts, uh, especially with uh, a border post uh, in at Mwami border, uh, uh, bordering Zambia, where we feel like uh, uh, the, coming, uh, the coming up with of this uh, border post has uh, really helped us, especially on the uh, issue of uh, businesses, where business people are able to transact at one uh, place, and that quickens the processes uh, of uh, clearing and, uh, the and uh, also making sure that uh, they uh, the time taken at the border is uh, is minimized. I think I can say that for now, uh, especially on the perspective of Malawi. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think it's very interesting uh, to highlight uh, this uh, issue of a special economic zone. I think it is something very new and relevant for Africa. And some country now try to put in place uh, this uh, special zone to attract more uh, investor and more innovator in this place. Uh, I thank you very much for, for this clarification, Honorable. Now, when we talk about industrialization, it's linked to the skill. Did we have uh, the right skills hmm, to make this industrialization uh, possible? Why well, I'm going to ask uh, Professor Marwala, Director of United Nations University, how is the is how critical is the manufacturing sector for employment generation in Africa, especially considering the youth bulge? Could you focus also on other sectors of a similar and or better outcome? Mr. Uh, no, Prof uh, Professor, are you online? Yes, yeah. I am online. I, uh, I great to see you. Uh, hear me. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me to come. Uh, um, the skills are absolutely very, very important. And of course, when we talk about skills, we need to understand that the nature of industrialization is changing. And coming from South Africa, where I was the deputy chairman of the Fourth Industrial Revolution Commission, deputizing the president, we have seen deindustrialization because of lack of investment into infrastructure new types of infrastructure, and also new types of education. Now, uh, 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 what, what sort of education do we need? It is clear that uh, the ability to handle automation is something that cannot be ignored. Uh, what we have seen in South Africa is that uh, uh, even industries that we thought we were competitive uh, and we did not in sufficiently uh, um, uh, invest into the know-how of automation and the technologies of automation, we lost them simply because uh, we can be able to import those goods from elsewhere where productivity is actually quite high. 
Now, the other thing that I also would like to add, uh, 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 especially when we deal with uh, employment, we also need to incentivize investment. We need to invest, incentivize investment into, um, into infrastructure. We need to incentivize uh, investment into technology, but we also need to incentivize investment into education because the education that you need today requires people to understand both the academic world and the, uh, uh, the industrial world. And one of the things that I did when I was uh, a vice chancellor of University of Johannesburg was to introduce the concept of a sabbatical for people in industry to come and spend time at universities and also for people uh, uh, in universities to go and spend time uh, 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 in industry so that the education they give is much, much more attuned to the economy that we see today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor, for, for this. I think the sabbatical university program is a very, very important. Now, how is go now this? How is going this sabbatical uh, program until you left uh, the country? Well, well, uh, uh, it's going very, very well. And of course, uh, the University of Johannesburg, we are left in very, very good, uh, uh, very, very good shape. It's uh, w one of the top universities in Africa. But what we have seen is that in addition to that, there are a number of literacy courses that you need to make sure that people have. At the University of Johannesburg, for example, with over 50,000 students, we made it compulsory for everybody to study artificial intelligence. And this is not uh, teaching you how to program in Python. This is literacy that allows you to know what uh, this technology is about, what it can do, what it cannot be able to do. Uh, because the people who are making decisions in, uh, in industry, uh, in government, um, you know, they, they don't necessarily need to know how to, to program, but they need to know what this technology is all about. And of course, as, uh, as, 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 you know, in the Fourth Industrial Revolution Commission in South Africa, we actually made sure that those things are actually enacted and, and also in Namibia where I was also a member so that we can be able to invest much, much more seriously. So in, in short, it is going very well. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for this. Uh, uh, knowing uh, this technology, using this technology is uh, very important. But uh, pushing uh, industrialization also come with uh, social and environment impact. Why I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Tifsi Gola, how should African country balance the social and environment impact with the push of industrialization, particularly in the research, in the rich economic. Madam Gola? Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, I think the capacity of, of African countries to sort of lift people out of poverty um, and create jobs and generate um, or integrate into the global economy is very strongly linked to the industrialization um, and the, and the development of uh, manufacturing, agro-processing, and value-added um, sectors in the service. So I think it's really important that um, this, the climate change is really taken into consideration in this process. Um, in terms of linking sustainable development agendas to, inter in, to industrialization, um, the global response really needs to embrace uh, the continent's industrialization potential in the various forms that it comes in while also supporting the continent's low carbon transition as much as possible. Um, maximizing the green path to industrialization could really provide a certain benefits for, for various African countries. And it's an opportunity um, to integrate themselves into the global green economy. Um, and I think it's really, really uh, significant um, and sort of a, a room that we have now um, to align domestic uh, agendas as well as um, uh, regional agendas to the global green agenda as well. Um, it's essential to have, um, to engage with uh, innovative uh, processes and productivity. And it's important for African countries to really uh, explore the potential of investments in green sustainable manufacturing 
and to look at um, balancing the, the viable industrialization paths um, while maximizing green industries. Thank you very much. We needed to explore this green industrialization. It well noted. Now I'm going to ask my uh, brother and friend Artsushi, who has a lot of uh, long experience on the digitalization of the ICT sector in Africa. I remember we started the ICT Kigali journey in 10, 15 years ago. Hmm? My question is, uh, from your perspective, what are the primary bottleneck in scaling manufacturing in as a high value sector in Africa? You can give the example of uh, Rwanda and other country you know very well. Okay, thank you, thank you my brother. Um, <coughs> You know, I don't particularly look African, um, since my genealogies actually says we, our family left about 20,000 years ago. But last 15 years, I've been blessed actually to be able to go back to the, the root. And I've been working actually mostly in Africa, especially in Rwanda. So, you know, even though I don't particularly look African, but please, you know, consider it to be your brothers, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, <coughs> that's a very good question, manufacturing. Um, when you look at, uh, like, for example, Asian manufacturing journeys in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, it's true. I mean, it started with, like, uh, garment industries, it then it went to electric industries, and so on. So there is actually a stage to it. Now, when you look at the continent of Africa, should we actually follow the same actually stage? Perhaps not, right? We actually does not need to actually go into that stage where the Asian actually went through it. I think we are much better than that. You know, with this new digital technologies, I think we can go really leapfrog or even like moonshot the industries. And the high value, you know, based sort of industries can be created without actually having to think about the traditionally heavy investment into like, uh, you know, roads and, and in and other infrastructure, I think, which are required when you really think about manufacturing and heavy manufacturing. Now, that does not mean that manufacturing is not important <laughs> for the continent. That's not. However, I think the balanced approach and then taking advantage of these te technologies, I think, is critical because that is a way really to reprog it in African continents. Context. Now, <coughs> now, if you want to do that, I think, when, I think when you look at it, the, it's already happening in Africa, right? Um, Dr. Hani was actually mentioning about the, the financial inclusion, to, you know, the electric transactions in Africa is about 25%, right? Whereas in the rest of the world, it's 5%. Now, that is real innovation, yes? That is actually really contextually and changing the whole world, actually. So heavily investing into this digital sectors, knowledge-based sectors with use and risk carrying, you know, Dr. Uh, what, uh, what, what is <laughs> the professor from uh, South Africa was mentioning? Yes, the reskilling of the people and then trying to actually capitalize, you know, some of the latest technologies like AI, to reskill them and then take advantage of it and creating the innovations. I think that's the key for the African continent. And then I don't necessarily like the word reverse innovations, but I think the innovation or innovative services and products coming from the continent is really has the potentials of really reaching to the north. That is going to be next export for the Africa. Thank you very much for this uh, comprehensive uh, response to that. Now, in the first round of our discussion, we hear a lot of good news and interesting things about uh, Sh key shortcoming about the role of government uh, through the development of uh, industrial park and a special economic zone. Also, the importance of uh, education as well as the use of the green technology. I think it is uh, some key step very important to put in place this industrialization of Africa through digital technology. But uh, I want to come back uh, to my brother, Nir. <laughs> you talk about uh, some uh, significant shortcoming. 
But I would like, if you can elaborate a little bit more, the role of state as a developmental state amplified by Japan and as East Asian economy. We can uh, learn about the rapid uh, industrialization of this country on African perspective, such, a, such as we are in the implementation of the African free trade area. Okay, no? yeah. okay, so uh, basically, uh, t uh, talking about the government's role, number one thing that many people pointed out, the speakers pointed out here, and also Hani uh, pointed out, is that there is the kind of shortage of skill. And if you look at the entire continent of Africa, uh, the continent has about the same number of software developers as the state of California in the US, which has about 40 million people, and Africa has 1.3 billion people. So basically, manpower, technical manpower. Not only that, if we are talking about AI, uh, especially the generative AI, which is becoming very popular now, and that is mainly developed in English language because most of the contents that they, are tr they have trained uh, <coughs> from the internet, that, that, is, that is basically the um, like chat GPT type of things. But Africa has, I think, um, spoken or uh, kind of written maybe more than 2,000 languages, and they have to develop generative artificial intelligence applications in local language, and that requires a lot of, lot of R&D, but R&D in general is lacking in Africa. And so basically the governments play a very important role in research and development. In the, in the report, I contributed chapter 12. Uh, and in the chapter 12, uh, I have mentioned that Africa's R&D as a proportion of GDP is only 0.47 percentage, which is the lowest across all the regions. Like even, even South Asia, which is where I come from, actually I was born in Nepal, has 0.65 percentage. And if you look at uh, you know, some of the countries like Israel and South Korea, they have more than 4 percentage. So, uh, maybe the private sectors alone cannot um, spend a lot of money on R&D, and the governments can play, a, play an important role here. And also training people. And uh, the International Finance Corporation says that Africa, African uh, countries have to basically provide information technology related skills to 230 million people for the job that is coming in the future. Maybe private sectors cannot do that. And you pointed out the FinTech thing, you know, like apparently uh, Africa is doing really good and out of 6.4 billion dollar venture capital that Africa received last year, 2022, maybe 30% is going to FinTech and a lot of FinTech, FinTechs are coming. But you know, a lot of those FinTechs are coming from Silicon Valley and China. Of course, a lot of them are being developed locally and so they are exploiting people, poor people without any financial education and they are getting a lot of loan and, and people are kind of, um, they are really harassing them and their credit, credit rating is going bad, people are committing suicide. So government have to, governments have to develop some type of policy you know, to make sure that the technologies developed by local companies or the foreign companies are utilized to benefit the people, not the companies that are developing that. Also, uh, the importance of you know the, uh, the data privacy and uh, other types of laws are important. I think my time is three minutes over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. I have a lot I, of things I, to talk, I but I, I, I want don't to listen from other people more. I don't know? want to stop you because you are my friend. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. I think uh, <laughs> we learned a lot about uh, your, your intervention. Government has a key role to play by investing in the infrastructure, education, also put in place a conducive environment to attract investors and also to open the market for the local. It is something very important uh, we have uh, to take into consideration if you want to uh, take benefits of this industrialization of the continent through digital uh, technology. Honorable, what uh, specific policy measures are in place in your country or being considered to leverage this uh, digital technology as tool for industrialization and structural transformation of uh, Malawi. If you have also some recommendation for as an African country, because uh, you are uh, now putting uh, in place uh, a model in Malawi, and that model I think uh, can be replicated in the Af is the Southern Africa and as African country, because I, I visit your country, I have seen what are you doing now in the development of the industrial zone through digital technology? 
Uh, thank you very much. Um, as Malawi, we uh, the cabinet just passed the na national digitization policy. Uh, the policy is a comprehensive uh, strategy that uh, will address critical imaging issues, uh, technologies uh, in uh, digital space, and also it will align uh, with Malawi national development targets. Um, some of the um, uh, uh, strategies that maybe I can talk about uh, Africans, African countries that they can do, uh, I would uh, recommend that governments should uh, have uh, new mechanisms to uh, industri industrialize, such as uh, new financing opportunities, uh, partnerships with uh, various stakeholders uh, will be key. Uh, as well as in Malawi, what we are normally doing is that uh, through the national uh, digitization policy, which we just passed, we want to make sure that uh, it, uh, we improve education and skills development programs so that we can equip uh, the workforce with necessary knowledge and uh, expertise uh, in, in the issues of uh, uh, in the industrialization. Um, we are also collaborating with uh, in education institutions and vocational training centers to provide relevant training. And um, by nurturing a skilled workforce, we believe that uh, we will enhance uh, productivity and attract more industries to to the country. Additionally, the government of Malawi is implementing policies such, uh, to support uh, research and as well as uh, development and encouraging innovation and technological advancement, advancements in uh, various uh, stake stakeholders. Uh, these uh, comprehensive efforts are aimed at creating a thriving industrial uh, area in Malawi. They want to the sector to grow. So these are some of the issues that as uh, Malawi, uh, we are also doing. And almost all our policies, like the youth policy, the population management policy, the agriculture policy, it encourages uh, the utilization of uh, digitalization. All social protection and economic programs, we are using the National M and E framework uh, that encourages integrated information system platforms. And this is uh, done through our Ministry of uh, Planning and Development, uh, as well as Ministry of Information. I think I can stop here. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this show also the importance of the, the skills uh, at the government level also, at the all sector level. And uh, Professor Marwala, you highlight very well the importance to build the capacity uh, to make uh, our population ready uh, to be key actor in this four industrial revolution. I like very well your concept uh, for industrial sabbatis sabbatical program. But we have a lot of, as you know, we have a lot of opportunity of, uh, in the implementation of this African free trade area uh, for the continent. They can boost to the industrial sector as well as all other sectors because we are going to work as a single digital market. Uh, and when we talk about single digital market, uh, digital technology, it become a key driver of this di single digital market. In light uh, with uh, the new opportunity presented by this African uh, free trade area, how should African country can reshape their uh, trade and industrial sector? Professor. No, I mean, I, th <coughs> I think um, the African continental free trade <coughs> agreement is a huge opportunity. But it is going to be a missed opportunity unless we do certain things. <coughs> I think firstly, we need to increase connectivity in the African continent. We know very well how difficult it is to travel in the African continent. And I suppose uh, the airport in Rwanda, which is at the center, probably is going to go a long way towards addressing some of these issues. Secondly, we need people to understand the African continent. The Africans must understand one another. When we were at the University of Johannesburg, when I was still before I moved to Tokyo or to the United Nations University, uh, uh, we introduced a course called, which is, was also compulsory for all the 50,000 students, Africa Insights Modules. And this will teach Africa's economy, history, and politics. And of course, coming from South Africa, I have seen many South African companies, MTN in Nigeria, uh, ShopRite, uh, 
uh, in in Central Africa actually failing because they did not understand the Africa uh, Africa's uh, political economy. And, uh, and 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 the other thing that we introduced was Africa innovation by bus, where we, because we believe that moving people by plane is it does not get you to land. Where we took over seventeen thousand students by bus to Namibia, to Zambia, to Kigali, uh, to by bus. Um, it was Africa innovation, and we say to a student, you need to identify the problems and write a one page essay on how you're going to address that problem. And this is really the necessary conditions for innovation. And of course, um, uh, going back to, uh, uh, to the issue of uh, the African continental free trade, uh, we, we have 54 countries uh, with 54 different, uh, uh, different uh, uh, currencies. I think one of the things, one of the policies that we need to start thinking about quite seriously is how do we start uh, having uh, a, a dominant African uh, currency to be able to ease the trade, uh, to ease the trade so that people can be able to, uh, to trade much, much easily and travel much more and so on and so forth. And of course, um, uh, 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 this obviously will, will work if we understand that Africa is diverse and therefore we need to invest uh, into ways of bridging that diversity, making sure that we understand each other much more so that we can be able to take advantage of the, uh, the free trade agreement. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the free trade area. Having a common currency, it is uh, something very key and crucial for the success of this uh, uh, African free trade area. I think uh, we can uh, also touch base on how we can have uh, one cryptocurrency also in, in the continent as we talk about digital single market and we talk about industrialization of the, 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 the continent. You highlight also the importance of the digital skills as well, your, your concept, uh, African, uh, what call it, uh, African inside, inside model, movie. inside model is, I think, uh, it's uh, very important for African to know what what we have in Africa, to understand very well the need of Africa. It is something I think uh, we can think about uh, to try to educate it, how youth generation to know what we need, what are our needs in the continent, and uh, we give, given that they can develop uh, a solution uh, to respond uh, to the African need. And this also, uh, I just, uh, uh, I want to ask one question to Mrs. Gola. Following that, how can academia and think tank support the development and implementation of the industrialization of Africa? Um, thank you. I think in this sense, I would like to really highlight the importance of South-South cooperation and um, uh, the platforms that it generates. We see a huge gap in uh, sort of leveraging cooperation platforms um, and frameworks uh, to learn from shared experiences of other Southern economies. Um, you see that Latin American countries face similar challenges uh, when it comes to things like climate change, uh, digital dissemination, um, and the modern monitoring and evaluation processes. Um, and we'll also keep seeing this with risks and limitations um, with technological leapfrogging, um, such as data privacy issues, uh, governance uh, restraints, um, and the existing digital divide that continues to grow. Um, so in this sense, I think South-South cooperation really creates um, great uh, platforms um, to be able to share experiences and learn from one another. And in this sense, uh, academia, as well as think tanks can come in by uh, providing um, uh, knowledge sharing platforms, um, such as the South-South Galaxy um, by the UN OSSC. Um, I think it, it's, it's really been highlighted in this report and other um, reports by the UN Office for South-South Cooperation that uh, South-South digital cooperation can really be um, important to industrialization across the continent. Um, it creates opportunities to build digital infrastructure like a data economy, uh, cloud computing and broadband infrastructure, as well as regional e-commerce agendas. 
And I think all of these things can really be furthered um, and enhanced through uh, knowledge sharing platforms and through providing um, uh, academia um, and academics from the global south with platforms to share their knowledge and their experiences. Thank, okay. thank you very much. Uh, you highlight the importance to build the infrastructure, the broadband, and we need the private sector also to play an important role on this industrialization. Could you highlight quickly the role of uh, private sector in the industrialization of the continent? We have only three minutes uh, to close this okay, uh, so, so thank, session. Thank you, my brother. Yes. So it's, it's actually true. Um, the connectivities in the continent, as the Professor Marwara said, is very, very important. And also, you know, in order for the AFTA to work very well, very well, you know, the financial transactions need to be actually smooth among the continental, you know, among the countries within the continent. And, uh, you know, Honorable uh, Susan and also Professor Neil mentioned that the government regulation, how conducive environment is very important. And Professor Gora was as well, uh, you know, reflected the importance of actually knowledge sharing. Now, reflecting on that, private sectors, I think, is going to be critical. Um, 20 years ago, during the WISIS process, I was at the Secretariat looking at the financing mechanism for ICT for development at the UNDP. And over there, we were emphasizing the private sector investment is a critical component for the, you know, the bridging the gap as well as the ICT for development. And then over there, so it's, it's, it's uh, over there we said like, yes, we need actually to have the conducive government uh, regulations and the environment to promote, uh, to promote the investment. I know that it's the time is limited, but <laughs> promote the investment in the, in the infrastructure sectors. Now, I think I have to emphasize two things. Now, if you want to do this, I think we need to actually have the smooth data transactions among within the continent and beyond the continent. So you need, the government actually need to understand the regulations, conducive regulations, to support the private sectors to actually transact data freely, with the trust, of course, and also security as well. But you need, if you don't do that, I don't think we can actually create the conducive infrastructures in the, within the continent, as well as this financial transaction mechanisms, because that is all about data. So I think these two things, the government really need to make sure the private sector is, can get so the private sector can really invest in this area. So Maktar, please. Thank you very much, my brother. I think uh, we can uh, summarize uh, quickly this uh, session. I, it was a very interesting uh, session, and we learned a lot from our distinguished uh, panelists. Uh, I think to boost the industrialization of the African continent through leveraging digital technology, the government has an important role to play by putting in place and conducive environment attracting the private sector and also provide opportunity to the private sector to access to the national market, as well as we need to build the capacity of our young generation and investing also continue to invest here to invest in uh, research development i think is is a, is is a key if you want to, to take opportunity of this uh, digital uh, uh, industrialization we don't forget when we digitalize when we digitalize we need to focus on green technology it is very important to be as uh, the impact the uh, the environment Im impact uh, as a negative effect also, the, the digital technology has negative effect on the environmental sector. We need to make uh, sure we can get the right technology, this green technology, this green data center to save our planet. It is very important. As uh, Africa, now we are uh, contribute to 4% to the greenhouse emission, and we, we can use this digital technology to reduce this uh, greenhouse emission because according to several studies, by 2030, the green uh, ICT can reduce for 20% this uh, greenhouse emission. I think it is also important to, to highlight the role uh, can uh, c Parliament can play also uh, to boost this uh, digital industrialization of the continent in the implementation of the FCTA. All has a role important to play in this uh, industrialization of uh, the continent. I would like to stop there to thank you all my distinguished uh, uh, panelists. We are running out of the time because we are in Japan. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> and thank, 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 thank you for all, and thank you for Annie for his uh, br brilliant presentation. 
and uh, and thank you all for all colleagues working uh, around uh, to make sure this uh, panel becomes successful. Thank you very much. Let's have a, a group picture before we leave you.